Version control can be a daunting topic, particularly if you're an artist coming from a non-technical background. But it doesn't need to be that way. Agreeing on how to organize your project assets and manage your code across a team can help you get off to a great start. My name is Thomas Jacobson, and in this video, we'll share some tips on Unity project organization. We'll show you how you can define certain standards that makes it easier to work with version control. These tips all apply regardless of what system you prefer using. We've recently also created a best practice ebook on version control. You can find more details in the book if you'd like to learn more. You can find the link in the description below. Let's start with project structure. You want to make sure to plan a good folder structure carefully from the beginning. Define a taxonomy which works well here now, but also one which scales well as your project grows in the years to come. Not only is a folder structure an internal agreement on how you organize your project files, it also helps you avoid version control issues later on. Don't create additional folders at the project's root level unless it's absolutely necessary. In general, you want to store all your content files within the asset folders whenever it's possible. You also want to avoid spaces in the final folder name. Instead, consider using camel case notation as an alternative for spaces. And finally, you want to avoid creating empty folders as they can create issues in some version control systems. If you need them, do remember to use a .keep file inside that empty folder. While there is no right way of organizing your folder structure, a common approach is organizing your project folders by asset type. Here are two examples of what that could look like. You're unlimited to this approach, but it's a great starting point and there's a reason why it's a popular practice for many Unity games. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out the Unity templates or learn projects for examples on how to organize a folder structure. What works best, of course, always depends on your specific project needs. The most important thing is just that you take the time to analyze your current needs as well as those needs you'll have in the future. The idea is to have a plan for your project organization. It shouldn't be something which is just happening organically and randomly. You also want to consider creating a separate folder for non-production scenes and testing. That way, you can easily differentiate between what was created for testing purposes and what will make it into the final production. You can provide even more clarity by simply adding some subfolders with usernames or certain areas too. And you can also consider using namespaces to avoid conflicts between class names declared in the production versus testing namespaces. Naming things is really hard, but it's even harder if you as a team haven't agreed on the standard on how to do it. How you name your game assets is probably one of the most important aspects to keeping your project elegant and efficient as it grows over time. Agreeing on standards across a team doesn't stop with the project folder structure. You want to define a naming standard for all the assets across the team to make things easier because sooner or later, we all end up working in each other's files. As an example, it's tempting to use short names to save a few seconds here and there. But what might be logical to you today may not be logical a year from now. It also might not make sense for another person in the team. So think of a good name as one which everyone intuitively understand and where you don't need to rename it later on in the process. Taking too many shortcuts and naming can be a really bad long-term investment. So do use description names whenever you can. What's a description name then? Well, a simple trick is just to follow the design document and be really specific. That way everyone will know what you're talking about. So as an example, rather than saying dragon vacation, you might want to say the red dragon layer. According to studies, using camel keys or Pascal keys improves readability. It also addresses the problem of having spaces in your object names, which can cause conflicts. So consider picking one of the two in general, Pascal case is the most widely used standard for naming folders and objects, but feel free to pick whatever aligns best with your code style standards. Just ensure that you and everyone else sticks to it, so you're always consistent. Underscores and hyphens can be useful, but the general advice is to try to avoid overusing them. One of the useful and recommended ways is to use them to denote variants of the specific objects, such as states, texture maps, or LEDs. As a general rule of thumb, you also want to split up your large and complex assets into smaller bits. Same thing goes for complex prefabs, where you can also leverage nested prefabs as one of the power tools available for creating modularity. This way, artists and designers can better collaborate while minimizing the risk of conflict. You can then use the scene manager to load multiple scenes using the load scene parameter as you need them during runtime. Also make sure to use the power scriptable objects for storing data whenever possible. Finally, while a lot of these tips is all about avoiding merge conflicts in the first place, 
If you do end up with a conflict, use the smart merge tools. You can find more information about that in the documentation. You can also make use of presets to enforce consistent standards or to apply reasonable defaults to new assets. If you're not familiar with presets, they essentially allow you to customize the default state of anything in your Spectre. Obviously, we all want to write code in a way so everyone can see that we care about our work. Similar to how naming standards for your project assets can help make your projects easier to navigate in, the same thing applies to your code. Creating a code style guide is often a great investment for maintaining a clean code base as the project grows. With more consistent code standards, you won't need to do as much refactoring. It's going to improve the readability and it's going to make it easier for everyone to swap between the different areas of your project or even on board new teammates. So consider creating a code style guide that removes the guesswork out of most of the coding conventions and formatting. There are no set in stone rules for what a code style guide should cover, but in general, you want to make sure that most decisions have already been made up front. The key is to make a decision on whatever works best for your team, and then once you decide it, that everyone sticks with it. A classic example of formatting, where there may be different opinions in the team, is brace and dentition style. There's the element style, where you place the opening curly brace on a new line, and then there's the KR style, which keeps the opening brace on the same line as the previous header. It's up to you whatever you want to do for your team, but that's an example of something which you may want to include in your guide. You may also want to consider things such as, does your team use Pascal case for enums, or is everything in capitals? Do you want to have a rule about using regions, standards, and all scripts? Do you have a policy for using tooltips to replace comments for inspector properties, and so on? Again, think of the code style guide as an agreement on what your team should be doing. A great guide makes a project feel like the work of a single author, regardless of how many people actually worked on it. Microsoft and Google both offer fairly comprehensive code style guides for CCR. Both are excellent starting points if you want to create your own or just as a source of inspiration. Outside of the code style, you can also align on certain practices such as design patterns and namespaces. Namespaces in general is a great way to help organize your code better. Namespaces is a great way to separate test content from production code but it can also help avoid conflicts with third-party assets where class names may end up repeating. You can also take advantage of namespaces in your code to map back to the folder structure you define for a bit organization as well. Once you define the format in, you can automate a lot of the process of keeping track of it. Most IDEs, including Visual Studio, offer tooling to enforce formatting standards and even convert existing project files to follow those guidelines. Unity also employs a template script to read from whenever you create a new one within the project. You can modify these script templates to override the default values and that way customize your scripts however you want to do it. That wraps up the tips which we picked from the guide for this video. Check out the ebook for many more tips. If you're interested in more tips and tricks, check out some of the other ebooks which we made available as well.